welcome to your next episode of Nature Notes. I'm out here in Schmeagle Reserve looking for the very rare and elusive North American porcupine. It is nearing dusk about now and these are nocturnal animals so they should be waking up and becoming active. We are on the border of their territory here in central Wisconsin so like I said they are very rare but today I'm hoping that we find one. So let's go on our hike and hopefully we find a North American porcupine. I cannot believe my eyes. I think I see a North American porcupine. Let's try to get a little bit closer. Hello, my name is Josie Peck and I am a Schmeekly naturalist. I'm currently studying environmental education and interpretation here at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. I had the rare opportunity of taking care of a North American porcupine over the summer of 2019. I was an animal care and education intern at Wolf Ridge Environmental Learning Center in Finland, Minnesota. Today, I would like to talk to you about how porcupines survive in the winter from finding their home, finding food, and surviving from their predators. A cozy home is just as important to us as it is to the North American porcupine. They are solitary animals and tend to rest up in tree crevices, but they can also find suitable dens in rock crevices, overturned logs, tree branches, and even exposed tree roots. But if it's a very, very cold winter, they may den up with other porcupines just to stay warm and cozy. So now that we know where they live, our next important thing to find is their food. North American porcupines have many different adaptions when it comes to winter. And one of these is becoming a snow plow to help find their food. Now they normally den up in a, a very good place for food. So in winter they change from eating mulberries and raspberry branches to eating evergreen needles. These give them the types of nutrients that they need to survive, but they have to den towards those areas. Becoming the snowplow burns a lot of that energy, so they must den somewhere near the evergreen trees. This also consequentially may kill the tree if they eat too many of the pine needles. Porcupines have very poor eyesight, so they rely entirely on scent to find these evergreen trees. So now that we know what they eat and how they get to that, let's talk about predators. You wouldn't think the North American porcupine would have a lot of predators due to the fact that they have very large quill. Here I have an example of a North American porcupine quill. It's about the size of my pinky. But to give you a better perspective, I have an African crested porcupine quill. They look pretty similar other than the fact that this is a very large porcupine quill. So, some predators include the fisher, marten, wolves, coyotes, and even great horned owls. Now, with martens and fishers, those are not their primary source of food. What they normally prey on are the snowshoe hare, but those are not very easily found in the winter due to their white coats. So then they switch to the North American porcupine. Now an easy way to find the North American porcupine in the winter is following those snowplow actions that they do to find their food. Since the North American porcupine cannot migrate or hibernate, they must adapt to their environment. They do this through finding their food, becoming snowplows, finding their home, whether it's with other porcupines or up in trees, and staying away from their predators. 
these animals are very gentle and adorable and we should go out and find these very rare and elusive North American porcupines here in central Wisconsin.